Hey there everybody, this is Shane Armin Rowe and today we're going to take a look at this guy I dug out of the closet. These plug and play type devices were very, very popular for a period of time and anything that happens to have Pac-Man Plus, uh, I picked it up. And so I thought, uh, you know what, why not? We got a few minutes here. Let's pull this guy apart and take a look at it and see if there's any sort of redeeming value in this whatsoever. So uh, this promises a variety of different, I'm trying to keep the glare off of it. This is supposed to be a collect and display. So not only is it supposed to be a, uh, a work of art, but also a fully playable Pac-Man game. And there's a lot of stuff that comes with it on the back and I'll do my best to get the glare off of it for you. But uh, I'll read these to you. So this promises to play Pac-Man, Galaga, Xevious, Dig Dug, New Rally X, Pack and Pal, Super Pac-Man, Mappy, Galaxian, Bosconian, and Pac-Man Plus. And so really Pac-Man Plus is what I got this for. Um, so again, I, I sort of tinkered with it a little bit. I put some batteries in it and uh, let's take a look at it closer. I'm dying to get rid of this box. And uh, inside are some basic instructions as per usual, you know, leaflet, not much going on there. And then the main unit itself, again, we'll take it out of the box, take it out of the plastique. And here we, here we have it, this big, giant, very pixelated Pac-Man four-way joystick, two buttons, and a slider switch on and off. There's absolutely nothing else remarkable about this other than the fact that there's nothing remarkable about this. And so when they say that you could have this up as some sort of a collector's item or something to display, they're kind of right. There's no plugs coming out of here. There's no buttons, uh, unusual buttons, nothing. This looks pretty good, really, from an Art Deco point of view. This is something I'll put up on the shelves behind me at some point. The, the controller is feels okay. It's very clicky. Buttons feel okay. Slider switch. All right. So you're probably asking yourself if there's no ports or wires or cabling, um, how do you plug this guy in? It's certainly not wireless, right? This isn't mirror cast or anything. It turns out that the back of this guy pops off and, you know, you put that to the side. And in the back is your standard, substandard composite and mono audio RCA plug, which means there's not much you're going to be able to plug this thing into unless you happen to have a really old TV. Uh, battery case here, I could take it apart, but you'll see that there's batteries inside it. Big whoop de doo right? And the kind of neat thing about this is, is the way that this case is laid out, you can put the back cover on it and there's a little hole for the cables to come out. So you can kind of keep it all together. So yeah, it does kind of look cool. And I've got my little portable HDMI monitor here, but HDMI this is not. So we're gonna need a little tool, something like an AV to HDMI box. I'll have links to all this crap. Uh, thank you, Amazon affiliates. We get a couple bucks if you buy stuff with our links. So thank you very much. Disclaimer is over. So what I have here is an AV to HDMI box. This takes standard composite input. So RCA input is exactly what we have here. It is powered by a USB. And unfortunately, it's also powered by a mini USB, not a micro USB, not a USB-C, but this big, fat, nasty plug, which I had to actually dig to find a cable for. Uh, so once you've got it powered, it does have an HDMI out, and I've taken HDMI out to mini HDMI, which is what my portable, um, my portable uh, monitor here actually uses. So it should be pretty straightforward here. We'll, um, We'll plug this in and we'll fire it up and we'll see what we get. Oddly enough, I remember it taking a second or two to boot. Oh, there we go. There we go, look at this. I don't know why I'm, ex I'm uh, actually excited that it works. This thing's been in the shed for a while. Let me see if I've got some audio here. There's not gonna be a ton of it. Even so, and of course I can't see anything from this angle. All right, so I'm gonna have to uh, do something crazy. I'm gonna have to sit up and actually look at it. All right, so what we have here, and it looks like it's coming across the screen okay. We have a remarkably decent looking menu.
Yeah, overall, I, I'm kind of impressed with the interface. I really wasn't expecting a whole lot, and this actually looks kind of good. So I will actually just throw something on real quick, and then we're going to do some direct feed stuff because I'm not going to sit hunched over here like this and showing you this unit. But we do have an A, B button, so uh, there will be games that do use the fire button. Obviously, Pac-Man does not. So let's um, take a look here. And... Uh, all right, so we can coin up and start. All right. Uh, again, I've got a huge glare, so forgive me, I can't see. Plus, I'm at a weird angle. So uh, my goal here is to just sort of take a look at it initially. Now, you also have to understand that this is being scaled and upscaled. Sorry, I really can't see anything with this, <laughs> with this lighting. Uh, but it is also being scaled and upscaled uh, to 1080p via this little box, right? So what you're seeing is not really what you would have seen on a TV. In fact, it might actually look better on a TV. If I knock it down to 720p instead of 1080p, um, we now, and it doesn't really look any better. I was thinking it might look better at a lower resolution, but it really doesn't. So we'll go up to 1080p. This is also stretching the display a little bit. Uh, you could probably figure that out. Um, that's also something that using this scaler, there's not going to be really anything I can do about it. Outside of actually plugging this thing into an actual TV that has composite input, I'm kind of screwed. However, we do have the ability to do that. So not only will we show you some direct feed of the games themselves coming up next, we'll also take a look at it on an actual TV. I do have a TV that takes composite input, so maybe we can get a better representation of that next. Stick around. Okay, we are back. Uh, I have this little guy plugged directly into a television using composite. There's no upscaling, there's no stretching. This is exactly what this thing was supposed to display. And it's nice to still have one of these uh, Vizio uh, televisions that actually accept all sorts of different input. It's not a CRT, but uh, listen, it's what we got. Um, so as you can see here, uh, everything is now in four by three orientation. So it's all not stretched, it looks the way it's supposed to look. And once again, we can flip through here. And you can see, of course, um, the arcade version of Dig Dug and most of these games were all in um, portrait, right? So they were portrait display. So these scores and lives and everything would be on the top and bottom. As with almost all of these plug and plays, the games have been reformatted to fit a more um, square screen and make use of the extra spaces. Right. Oddly enough, Bosconian already had the stuff on the side. So in, in some cases it works out, in some cases it doesn't. So let's actually take a look at some of these games. You know what? I was going to do a direct feed, but honestly, a direct feed is going to look stretched out and, and warped. I think this is the better way to do it. So let's do it from here. So let's take a look at Pac-Man. Press and hold A and B to quit. All right. Obviously, the colors are not very vibrant here. This is composite. But I remember some of these... Um, yeah, see, that's actually the right pattern. I remember um, some of the patterns for Pac-Man. And a lot of times, the home versions were not accurate in terms of patterns. They were sort of reprogrammed. This feels pretty good. I mean, it's not... Obviously, it's not a, an arcade port, but... Uh, it's probably an NES on a chip in there. There's nothing powerful in here enough to be doing emulation. So, well, proper emulation for an arcade. So anyway, so we're going to hold A and B. There we go. And do you want to exit to the game select? We will say yes. All right, cool. Let's take a look at Super Pac-Man. We'll buzz through all these. For most people, this sort of emulation is fine. Where we have problems here, of course, are how you plug it in, what do you plug it into, right? Because not everybody happens to have an old Vizio laying around. So this wouldn't be super practical to use today. It's Super Pac-Man, what do you want? All right, good enough, good enough for government work. Oops, hit the wrong one. Got to hold it longer, I guess. All right. It's, it annoys me that it goes back to the top, but whatever. Ah. 
All right. Obviously, we can't have a video without my dogs barking, so congratulations. You've, you've reached the dog barking segment of the video. So one of the things I'd like to point out um, while we're here talking about it all. So first off, obviously, these are not arcade perfect. Um, in some cases, it looks like they have preserved the patterns. In some cases, it's not going to be that way. Um, what, we do, what we do know here is that we've had some reformatting of the screen. Um, we've had some, some uh, input injection going on in here. So is it going to be perfect? Probably not. Um, but that's not what we're here for. The other thing, too, is how, how does this thing feel to hold on to? I mean, I can tell you right now, I would not spend hours and hours with this. I mean, because if you hold on to this, th these points are cutting into my, into my palm. I mean, you could kind of hold it like this, right? But I haven't done anything firing yet where I would actually want to hold on to it. So let's maybe, um, now let's run through the rest of the games. We're already here, right? So Pac-Man Plus is always one of my favorite Pac-Man games because it's very random. Uh, it looks a lot like regular old Pac-Man. In fact, the patterns are even similar, as you can see. But look, whoa, 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 what happened? He didn't change. This game will do nothing if not keep you on your toes. Sometimes when you eat an Energizer, somebody won't change. If you eat a fruit, holy crap, all the monsters disappeared. Holy crap. Well, uh, there's all sorts of interesting little uh, fun variants to Pac-Man Plus, which is why I always kind of like to see it getting some love. Um, so Pac-Man 256, you might be saying, oh, well, they put the mobile game on here. Well, obviously, that's not Pac-Man 256 that we've come to know and love. Instead, uh, it is essentially starting you off on the very last screen. I don't even know if I can complete this or not. So I don't think the energizers even work now. You just nip them and nothing happens. <laughs> So anyway, if you get through all this, you get to see the crash screen, blah, blah, blah. So that was sort of their bonus on here would be, yeah, you can actually see the, the if you're not Billy Mitchell, you can see the crash screen. I always liked Mappy too. This is a game where you do have to use a fire button. So now I have to hold this thing a little bit differently in order to enjoy it. Ah, crap. It's Mappy. You've seen all of these games a million times. These are the games that always get reprocessed over and over again on all of these um, systems. All of the Namco packs, all of these things always have the exact same games, except for Pac-Man Plus, which is, again, the reason I got this thing to begin with. And if there's not a tune that would drive you to commit Harakiri, then it would be this. I don't even know how long I can play this without losing my mind. Oops. Joystick feels responsive enough, but I have to hold it in a weird way, right? In order for it to be somewhat comfortable. I can't really hold it like this, right? It's just not comfortable, so I have to hold it like this and use my thumb. I've got big man hands, right? I've got these big uh, Neanderthal claws, so it's almost comfortable for me, but if you had a smaller, I know I didn't put down smoke. If you had smaller hands, this is just tear your hands up. This isn't even, wouldn't even be fun to play. All right, so now we actually get to the shooting games. And, uh, well, Dig Dug's not really a shooting game, but kind of. Let's take a look at Bosconian. Let's see if the speech is in here. All right, sweet. Well, all right, that's cool. I've always had a weird soft spot for this game too, and I don't know why, because it's not like that great of a game. Ah, you cannot go at an angle. It's four directions only. I don't remember the actual game being that way. I thought you could go to an angle in Bosconian, but maybe not. Maybe I'm remembering it incorrectly. All right, it's Bosconian and it seems to work. So Xevious, I think, is the only game in here that requires two buttons. So you can fire, and you can also drop bombs. So fire for A, dropping bombs for B. So this, is, I think, is the only game that they needed to include that extra button for, which kind of makes me wonder why they included it at all. I mean, that has to have added some cost to the unit. It's Bosco, it's, uh, it's, it's Xevious. I mean... Again, you've seen all these games a hundred times. Uh, 
Ah, yes. The detrimental scrolling screen. This is one of the things I hate the most about a lot of these packages. Notice how the screen has to scroll for you to get to the bottom of it. In portrait mode, you wouldn't have had this problem. I hate scrolling screens. I hate when they take a game that originally did not require scrolling screens and they make it scroll. It just, it just makes me crazy. I wouldn't play this. I would not play this because I'm a little bit too much of a purist. That's kind of cool. You can hear they have the sampled effects in there. Or in this case, the NES port, I'm sure is what we're playing here. You know, I've played a lot of these portable game systems and a lot of the grotesque emulation packages. And, and I'll be honest, this is like one of the least offensive because it actually kind of feels right. I mean, listen, the controls are nothing to write home about, but the stick is okay for my big old monster hands anyway. Not paying that much attention. All right, and so we have one left to go. Probably my least favorite game in this whole collection. I don't know, people have a, a fondness for Galaxian. I, I have no fondness for Galaxian. Probably because I suck at it. I don't like being restricted to one bullet on the screen at a time. I think, I understand that's part of the challenge. You'll be more accurate if you think you can't have another bullet as fast, but it just, this game just never, never had any appeal to me. For God's sakes, just kill me, die. All right, so there it is. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, there's a high score thing. Let's, what's that? Let's do the view high score thing. Oh, well, see, that's kind of cool. And you can erase that high score if you like. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. What does this all games do? I like how it changes the icon, too, here, to represent an in-game character. That's kind of nice. Oh, I don't want to erase. Well, I don't care if I erase all of them, but... Anyway, there you go. So this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this little guy. It was kind of neat dusting him off and, and having a, another opportunity to show him off to everybody. And I do. I think I'm going to pack him up and I'm going to put him on my shelf and you're going you're gonna to get to see him in later videos. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell. You guys know the rules. Uh, you guys know the routine. Uh, so please and thank you. Appreciate you watching. Uh, your viewership means everything. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.